Hi, welcome back. Right, so we're still on the multi-object param configuration within loops. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. Uh, in the previous video, I thought that we had totally had it down and everything was working perfectly. And no, 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 not at all. Um, so we'll spend another couple of hours on it and uh, now I've finally got it working. Uh, what you've got here is the point cloud along with a bit of geo just to you know prove that, that the function works now so I definitely have two railings if I look here within the parameter suite I have two railings I have an outer and an inner curve so the level curve and I have the uh, exterior curve right so for certain finally this is doing what I expect it to do. And if I don't document this, then I'm pretty sure I'm gonna shit myself the next time I come to look at this. So let's go of it in the way that it's fresh in my mind. So if in six months I have a need to go and touch this again, I know that I can pick it up within a few minutes and not shoot myself. Right, okay, so the external curve. Forget that it's starting off at four. Uh, the, the, I deleted the last three loops so this is where it left off and that's number four right so this is the top level curve and it is pointing to the top level level one curve interior right so if i click on this here uh, there is the binding it's all in green doesn't matter if it's in green anymore because in the the, the nested curves i'm now using python so note to self python python's what's going to do the trick for you Right now, on the let me zoom out and show you what we got here. I'm going to move this off screen. We've already talked about it. I'll bring it back if I need to. Right, so let's just increase the visibility on what we've got here. So, very top level, we have that object merge, which brings in the, uh, the internal curve, and that's working fine. All right, I do some jiggery poker here not important what we're focusing for is the binding now keep in mind that the top level for each count is starting at four from a textual representation right okay so the next thing is i'm passing this data down into uh the the, the first nested uh loop and in this instance we are going to be looking at this doesn't matter these are both at the same level yeah so in terms of indentation both the railing section and the exterior curve section are at the same level as siblings uh, it just so happens that straight away visually going into five for each five um, we actually are doing a binding on the exterior curve right so let's move that over quickly okay so here what's happening is is just quickly look on that. Notice that I've only got one item here, which maps on to the fact there's only one external curve. Not to worry about that. But in here, I am referencing the outer parents for each count. So remember I said, remember that it's indexed at four. You don't want to be using this level's count. You want to be using the parents count, right? Um, and in terms of the fact that this says underscore uh, num obj, if I go back over here and hover on this section here, we have underscore num obj2, and then we have to pass the one in as the postfix, right? So underscore num obj2, perfect. And the external counter, do not use the local count or you are gonna be finding that you're getting errors and you can't really figure out why. It's because it's the parent count that is driving this index. Just how it is, if you are coding it, it would stand out and make a lot of sense. Now, uh, just, it, it might be that I didn't need to cater for any kind of a race condition, but I did. And so within VEX, I just put, you know, parent iteration number here and also the local iteration um, on here as well um, within these variables so that I can get access to them within Python I couldn't 
bother to go and figure out how to read a detail node within Python, right? So here we got the, the code <laughs> that is necessary in order to um, access the information for loop and wire up the OBJ. Okay, so how does it look? Um, we're looking for extension loop info because we're going to be populating that. So essentially what I've got here is this specific node. Uh, let's just trim this here a bit. All right, so extension loop info. And on there I have the parent iteration and the iteration number for the local. And just for me, it's more like for debugging purposes for me so that I can quickly understand where we are in the loop. So I take that and I'm going to populate it with the parent information and the, lo the, the local iteration, all right, um, which I'm grabbing off this, all right? So I'm just saying from the geo, so it's within the geo space, get that data. Um, again, it would be nice if everything was in Python or everything was in VEX. This is how <laughs> I was able to, to get my head around what's going on. Now notice that I'm incrementing um, both of them because the for each is going to start uh, on zero and we need to be starting at one. We're just working with the tool guys so if it, it doesn't make sense what you're visually looking at this is how it works. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is find out what is my parent container. So I get a reference to it and that parent container is going to be uh, up here which is G29. Okay, um, which all the parameters are configured here. Okay, um, from there, uh, the next thing that we want to do is wire up the path data so that we can query the container. What does that mean? Object path. I need a parent information. I've got this um, prefix, postfix, uh, and I've got it's configured like this. So in between the parent information, the parent iteration and the local iteration I'm putting this data why okay so if I go to the uh, parent section and have a look and go down to the object path notice it's been auto generated for us in this manner so it wants a number here and it wants a number here okay so all I'm doing is making sure that I take this into account so that I can set the values or retrieve the values using that mask. Okay. Right. So I'm hoping that you've been following and all makes sense so far. And then we want the name of the object merge. Now the, the three object mer merges that I'm using at the moment. So there's one up here. Yeah. Top level one. And then one within each section. There's another one here and another one here down the bottom. And each one of them have a, has a unique name. And for the object path, the, those names are unique as well. Now, what's confusing is, say for example, when you look at this here, that object path name, is, even though it's the first index, is different to that one, right? It's just what it is, and you need to take that into account as you're coding, right? Um, and then the next thing that's even uh, more confusing uh, is the fact that, well, when you're actually looking on the actual object merge itself as it's been configured, look, it's just got a post fixes of, of one, so object path one, right? And so at the local level, if you've only got one item, within your object merge it's going to have only one object path one parameter there if you have two the next one's going to be object path two if you have three object path three and so on and so forth right that is different to what goes on at the top level right and again this is probably only important if you're doing this at code level so again let's continue all right, so I print out the iteration um, that we're currently at just for debugging purposes. And then the next thing here, remember when I mentioned that I have this kind of loop info principle where I'm getting my debug data from. So in here, I have my own personal uh, parameters, not very important for you, but there we go. Um, each one has a prom, whatever name the name is as its parameter name. So nothing sophisticated. 
And if you want to copy or not copy this section, then that's fine. But that's what I'm doing at that part of the code. From there, I'm saying, hey, if the iteration is greater than zero. Now, again, because we've uh, post fixed or, or we've incremented the value by one, that should never be the case. And the, the loop itself is a uh, for, for each count or for each number. So uh, based how it's been set up, we should never have an, inter, uh, an instance where it's at zero, okay? But I just kind of like, um, I'm guarding the loop so it doesn't fall over. Um, and as I was coding, I had to do that. So again, you don't necessarily have to do that if you're doing something similar. So, right, uh, next up, we then want to configure the variable. So remember, when you're dealing with the local OBJ, you need to make sure that you're only thinking about the variable name and the index. Not that strange formatting that goes on at the top level. That is just to make sure that whatever you configure is unique. At this level, it's just a basic loop, right? So you grab that, you put on the iteration, the local iteration. Remember we have the parent iteration, which is the outer loop's value, right? Like how you'd code a standard loop, okay? Um, if I'm explaining this and you're thinking, oh, that makes perfect sense, trust me, if you never played with these UIs before, <laughs> no, no. The tool has its own nuances and uh, you've got to get your head around them, right? So from there, uh, do a bit of printout of what I've got. Then I'm saying for the container, um, evaluate it based on the uh, path. So the path here is configured as the OBJ. So I'm not looking for the path as in the actual node. I'm looking for the path as in the actual path to the uh, geo that I'm looking for. In this instance, it's a curve, right? So from there, uh, I grab that node based on its name. Uh, again, the name is there. That's the actual node here. Let's just move this over a bit, all right? And then from there, I want to set the, the value because, again, I'm reading that value out and I am now want to set it against, again, current object path merge, which is that part with the basic, simple index uh, postfix with the, the iteration that we're currently at, all right? Um, and then that should work. So to complete... There you go. All the objects that I'm supposed to have. And because I know I have two sections that are going to be like steps going into the interior of the level once we actually get all the, uh, the instance points configured here. So you're looking at that point cloud. What on earth is that? It's just some um, basic data. Yeah. So all that's going to be pulling in some geo. Um, I'm going to be focusing for that now. But that's it um, for being able to set up the multi-object param within a nested loop. I'm doing the exact same thing in this section here, right? Um, and I'm driving it by Python. So Python is being used to grab the data, configure it, and set it on here, right? So um, as I was perceiving it um, earlier, if you do have um, data, that you're passing through within your multi-object param uh, based on setting the values like this. I guess maybe if it was only just a top level, it will do an auto bind and um, you'll find that notice it's in green, okay? But once you come down here and you start nesting these values, you may find that uh, it's not doing an auto bind and you're gonna need to get creative. Okay, so notice this section here is not in green, and so I'm using um, Python to be the handshake between the top level configuration, i.e. the HDA's parameters and the SOP data that needs to go into the nested uh, node. Right. I hope that all made sense. If it didn't, watch again. Do not, do not uh, force it. You know, it, it can be a bit frustrating, uh, just as long as you remember what I highlighted here. The external um, count is what you're supposed to be using to drive uh, the, the index for the top level section, right? 
So again, what we have here, just to kind of highlight it quickly, I'm pulling in the parent situation, I'm increasing it, right? And then using it accordingly when I actually drive the path data in terms of the request. And the reason why we have to do that, just close that down, open this section here, is because you need that when you come down to this section here. It doesn't just want its local number, it also wants the parent information. And I guess if you continue to nest them down, if you're doing something super complicated and you need to do that, you need to keep that in, into account. All right, my name is David Blissett. I'm gonna go have me a drink and uh, yeah, pat myself on the back because that took five days. Right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again.